So I want to really sort of introduce you to uh, those that maybe haven't travelled too far to Gloucestershire. So we know we're actually in Britain, part of Europe, and we haven't got the wind farms on this one. And I'm going to introduce you to Gloucestershire and a little patch of land just north of Sarancester between sort of Stroud, Sarancester, Gloucester and Cheltenham. And in Gloucestershire, we're actually looking at uh, 211,000 hectares of farmland at the moment. Uh, incidentally, quite a lot of that is livestock. Um, we have uh, just over 5,000 holdings and probably just under 3,000 real farmers. And that can be reflected in the farm sizes we're looking at in those areas, with only 11% being relatively larger farms and some 46% being very small farms. Let's go to a small area, some 2,000 hectares, and look what we've actually got there. Well, we've probably got something like 50 farms in that area, five large farms, four uh, intermediate, and then right down to 23 farms, very small, small holdings. Probably seven to 10 of those are growing arable crops, four dairy and five beef farmers, two pig farmers, 12 sheep farmers, seven poultry, three fruit and veg, one goat farmer, and seven horsey culturalists. So we are actually still feeding a lot of horses even now, um, but we're not getting any work out of them. And we've probably got 80, uh, 18 full-time and 31 part-time uh, owners, two full-time and one part-time manager, and then eight full-time and six part-time workers, and maybe seven casual labourers operating in that sort of 2,000 hectare area. We can see the breakdown there of the temporary grass, the permanent pasture, the rough grazing, some half of the land in that area down to grassland supporting livestock. And then we see the whole range of other crops that would be uh, typically found within Gloucestershire. And this is based on the DEFRA stats, uh, most recent DEFRA stats for the land use in Gloucestershire. And this is what we could do for the surrounding area of Bristol, the green halo. Livestock wise, you can actually see that in terms of head, poultry are the largest number of, of uh, creatures living in that area, but obviously uh, they consume far less than a dairy cow. Let's actually look a bit closer at those farms and see what we're looking at. Well, we've probably got 2.5 million litres of uh, milk being produced, about 80 miles between the farm and the dairy, probably 100 miles travel to retail, and then maybe another five miles from, from retail to home, and relatively few, if any, local outlets for milk. You're buying this mainly through the supermarkets, through the main uh, purveyors of milk, the main milk companies. Beef, maybe 200 metric tonnes, plus we've got imports travelling several thousands of miles to supply the beef needs within, within Gloucestershire. Uh, 80 to 100, 200 miles to an abattoir, because a large number of those have been closed. 150 miles to retail, 5 miles to home, but some local outlets for beef, if you can find it. And if you go to our local Butts farm on the water park, there's some excellent uh, rare beef brief there to try. Pigs, maybe some 13 metric tonnes, but UK imports and imports from Europe coming in. 80 to 100, 200 miles, there's fewer of those pig slaughtering plants around. And again, the long distance moving from... Uh, to retail and then back to home. Carrying on we see sheep, again we're actually seeing a net export of sheep from Gloucestershire uh, into, particularly into Europe. Again it's quite significant travel of the livestock to abattoirs for processing, back to retail and back to home. Cereals, probably 2,500 metric tonnes of cereals, 400 metric tonnes of oilseed, 70 metric tonnes of pulses, about 30 miles to store, 200 plus miles to mills and to local outlets, there are a few of those. Horticulture, about 50 metric tonnes of veg, plus significant imports of veg into that area. Five miles to the pack house or store, 150 miles to retail. Good local veg outlets, very poor fruit outlets. So you can actually see that even within that Gloucestershire small area, we have a lot of travel, a lot of transport, a lot of dependence on oil for that sort of agriculture to carry on. To meet a need. And then finally we have a few goats as well. We actually know what the externalities that agriculture is going to have to face in the next 10, 20, 30 years. We know that climate change will lead to hotter, drier summers, warmer, wetter winters, but most importantly more extreme weather conditions between those seasons causing crop damage and stress on livestock. Also we know the post-peak oil scenarios and we can predict that we'll get rising fuel prices and fuel shortages higher cost of oil-based fertilisers and pesticides, which agriculture is being driven by, and agriculture is likely to be the first hit by that economically. So the, uh, the traders will still be able to drive their Ferraris to London to be able to trade, but the farmer won't be able to get his tractor to go down the field to plough the soil. 
So what are the sort of future farms going to be looking like in sort of 2050? Well, we might see some increase in arable um, overall, some of that going to biofuel. Dairy, maybe similar numbers, but probably more spring calving herds with less fresh milk in the late winter period. Yields per cow might go down because concentrates become too expensive and maybe more reliant on grazing and forage, therefore a more extensive dairy system, perhaps needing more land than what we uh, perhaps uh, would consider. Beef, probably more uh, less intensive beef, more extensive, finishing on forage plus legume silages, more housing in the winter to protect the soil. Sheep, maybe uh, increasing sheep numbers to catch around crops, uh, greater at converting pastures into soil fertility, housing in late winter, perhaps more early lambing, so that more of the lambs finish off the grass rather than on expensive root crops and concentrates in the winter. And maybe less mutton available and lamb available in the winter period. Pigs, fewer but maybe more outdoor systems, perhaps even with some restriction on farrowing at certain times of the year so we've not got too much stock in the winter period. Maybe more barn finishing. Poultry, maybe fewer intensive units, more poultry in natural environments, living in a more open or in covered areas, maybe more integrated into cropping, more arable coppice, more woodland linked to poultry production. They actually don't like being in the open, they like to be undercover. And perhaps horticulture increasing, but more protected cropping, so maybe more polytunnels to protect those crops in those extreme periods. Increasing water harvesting, increasing uh, use of that, but perhaps increased pest and disease challenges because of the change in the uh, climate we're experiencing. And we might see novel crops and livestock, more vineyards, I'll vote for that, exotic fruits and veg under protected cropping, buffalo, mozzarella cheese, rabbit farming, vermiculture, aquaculture, maybe even algal farming for animal feed and oil. Who knows what these sorts of future farming might look like. But I actually thought we could look at two scenarios of the future. Uh, and if I've got half a glass of water here, I'm actually the pessimist, my glass is now half empty. And if we get it wrong, by 2050, we could actually see society where global food trade is reduced to shipping of non-perishables only. We can't afford to air freight anything. So forget your string beans from Kenya. Fuel oil rationing to essential services, perhaps including agriculture, or it's too expensive and it's on the black market. Seasonal food shortages in towns and cities, some urban gardening. Urban food riots, remember the fuel oil blockade and how quickly we ran out of bread. Organised crime targets central distribution stores and transport of our main retailers because food is so valuable. Increasing rural crime, crop losses, stock rustling and fuel theft. Mass occupation of land but few have the skills to grow food. Land becomes impoverished. More horses and dogs are eaten. That could address the horticulture bit. What about farming in this future scenario? We'll abandon all but the best land, the bit we can defend. Increase security and fences and patrols. Marginal land reverts to wild woods, but over-harvested near the towns, we start to get the barren halos around the cities and the towns. Livestock housed at night to protect them. Farmers and rural communities move towards food security only and forget about everyone else. Look after yourselves. Urban-rural fragmentation within society. Political system fails. Hyper-food inflation. Barter system returns. Some farmers supply the black market with food and biofuels and organised crime starts to run protection rackets to protect some farms in return for food and fuel. Do you want that future? No, this is the optimistic scenario. No, this is the... <laughs> okay, let's go to the cup half full now, folks, because that's a bit frightening. <laughs>